Welcome to this week's episode of the Warp World Podcast. It's a podcast. We've got the Noble Tofu on as a guest host, but drop the the. It's just Noble Tofu, and we're going to talk about news in Mario Masters Coliseum and friendship. See you there. Woo! Yeah! You are now listening to the Warp World Podcast. Boom shakalaka! Two. Two one. one. Clap. <laughs> You don't fucking say clap. You clap. Oh, you don't say clap. Oh, you shit at <laughs> Intro the podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, welcome to the Warp World Podcast. Woo! Episode, what episode is this now? 112. 112. Episode 112. That is a lot. Um, my name is Grand Pooh Bear. Uh, joining me this week and each and every week for here on and forever. Of course, we have X Water. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> and uh, stepping in for Jaku, who is on a top secret mission in Japan right now, we have the Noble Tofu. Hi. Hello. Hello. It's just noble tofu, but you know that's the, the 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 noble tofu underscore. I still uh, don't fully believe there was never a the. There was never a the in the noble tofu. No, it was tofu night at first, and then I changed it because you know, you un- you spell the name out, and the underscore kind of makes it sound like, you know, this just, just fill in the blank with the c, tofu, tofu. underscore night. Tofu underscore night. Is night spelled K or yep. N? Yep. No, K, like a knight in armor. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't understand it. what letter I would put in to turn tofu night into something inappropriate. Uh, let's see. Let's see what it would probably do. To fuck night? <laughs> <laughs> Knight? I'm still I'm still not picking it up, but if you want to look at look, it, look it, it as a special like behind the box cereal challenge for the listeners at home. <laughs> behind the box cereal challenge. You know, no, you I would get, like, like follow people it in. So bad, it's, is it so bad you can't say it? Like is it Well bad? no, it, what what happened is is I would follow people, host people, and it would come up as anonymous because some people have uh you know their 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 settings to where it doesn't oh, allow derogatory Tofu names. F U blank K yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I see. I get you. Toe fuck yeah. night. <laughs> toe. <laughs> the real origin story. We never we never got to see the toe at MMC3, but the real nope. origin story was so he's just got night. a weird foot fetish. <laughs> and that's what everyone night. was thinking. And this guy really wants to see his toe or wants to show his toe. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> um MMC though, right guys? Right? Right? Oh, right? Uh, in fact, our last episode, which I got, I hope we didn't put out the video to that episode. No, I, I, uh, I Jaku never uploaded it, so I uploaded that video God. just without it. Honestly, it would have been weird. <laughs> oh my god, it was so weird. Anyway, um, can we can we just talk about A, how awesome MMC was overall for a sec, but at B, how fucking tired I still am three days after MMC. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still coming back. Yeah. I'm uh I'm still trying to like catch up on sleep because I'm pretty sure every night there I slept for four hours. And then the, the last day I slept for three hours. I was just uh. Man, that last night I didn't even like sleep, right? I got into the plane, tried to sleep on the plane for whatever reason. It was the coldest plane in the universe. So I just couldn't get home and I'm like all right, I'm just going to power through and stay up until nine and get a good full night of sleep. Dude, the second I walked through my door, my body just autopiloted to the bed and I passed out for like eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, same. I mean, I changed my flight to be earlier. I mean, me and you both stayed up. Actually, all three of us yeah. stayed up the whole night yep. before. Yeah. Yep. Um, it was just, uh, it was, it was rough, man. And, and yeah, I, I don't, I think I went out till 5 30. The two nights, like the night before the finale. <laughs> yeah, every every night was pretty much like the earliest bedtime for me was maybe four or five Pacific time too. Yeah, yep. and then you wanted to get up early enough so you could A, eat before we went live, 
And B, you got you had a shower. You got to beat everyone to the shower because there's 30 billion people in one house. Yeah. Yep. Um. So yeah, it just it was. Uh, I tell you right now, it was something else. It was definitely something else. Uh, it was a really incredibly fun week. I had an absolutely amazing time. Uh, we raised a stupid amount of money, guys. Like for a real, stupid amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. Suck it, runaway guys. <laughs> um, yeah. I I I'm sure they won't come back and beat us next year. Um, but man, I mean, I'm so proud of what we all did and what we accomplished and overall just like our fucking dope ass community. I don't know. Yeah. Fucking kicked ass. Yeah, we Mario had so many good memes deep. this year. Yep. Go ahead, Tofu. What were you saying? So, I was going to say we had, we've had so many good memes this year and like oh so God, many things yeah. that just like happened so organically that were the best thing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, hisses and honey was, will I mean, never what, be hisses forgotten. And honey. Yeah. yeah, hisses and honey is definitely the best meme, right? I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, 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 by far, I think. Um, the magic eight ball was a low key MVP. Like, maybe didn't win the award, but was definitely like the coaches were like, you know that that eight ball guy sure did put a lot of heart in this year. Oh yeah, the eight ball. I think the eight ball is going to make a comeback appearance. We'll see it. Oh yeah, because um, it was it was pretty great. I gotta I gotta agree. A ball was really funny because it's like it was like our magic eight ball was broken, and like every time we would ask it a question, it would be like, "I do not know that answer." You know, or it was ridiculous. Yeah, the He's origin stories adopted. were good too. People were people were into the origin stories. I I love that as the origin stories went on throughout the week, you could tell like everyone kind of just lost their creative flavor because yeah. it would be like. <laughs> It'd be like, you know, <laughs> Raging Monkey. How did I get my name? Uh, well, you're a monkey that rages. <laughs> okay, there you was one that absolutely fucking got me. It was, I can't remember the username and I can't remember exactly what you said to them, Pooh, but they were like, what's my origin story? And essentially you just said, I banged your mom. And, <laughs> and I was like, this poor guy just donated $25 to get slammed in front of 7,000 people. I wanted to send him an Uno card after that, man. <laughs> and your mom jokes will never be not funny to me. No, I, yeah. I, I I'm right there with you, man. Every <laughs> single time. Yeah, your it's Twitter so name funny. is still at is still Grand Pooh Bear at your mom's house. <laughs> Got him. I know. <laughs> uh, glad to find, see we're still all like 13 years old at heart. Oh yep. yeah, I yep. thought I I I. <sighs> I, I, I can't believe how much mileage we got out of Fists and Honey. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. It was yeah. the funniest fucking book, man. Like, it was... I, I, it <laughs> was so good. It, 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 it just would turn its... Like, you, wouldn't, you, you had no idea what was coming every time. Every I time felt, you had no idea. I kind of felt bad for you and Laser because you guys are over there trying to do a race of an extremely hard game. And then it's just like... You know, Patty reading, you know, <laughs> beef reading. take off your clothes. Like the Grand Prix World 2 race was probably like, probably like the highlight of like competitiveness that was going to happen in that particular event. And, you know, yeah. in, in MMC, because it's not like a competitive event at all. And yeah. then, and then we end up reading a fucking book during the whole time of it. The funniest goddamn book of all time. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. It, it was hilarious. Yeah, it was it was fucking magical. The um another really good segment was anytime we had Rick and Morty impressions going on, but particularly oh the I can show you the world. <laughs> <He's> that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they got three lines in and then it was just it was just Glitch Cat tearing into Patty about you're never gonna make it as a singer, Morty. You're never. What do we send you to Juilliard for, Morty? Like, <laughs> well, I feel like that's exactly how a Rick right? and Morty episode would go, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, it was so funny. Yeah. And bloody tears, dude. <laughs> I'm oh. still singing it in my head, <laughs> dude. I have like the best picture of Barb. Like, I had the best <laughs> angle of Barb singing bloody tears from where I was sitting. Oh Dude, I didn't gosh, know what the Castlevania song was called. So when he when he said I'll sing it, I'm like, oh wow, Barb 
You know, Barb's an artistic guy. He has all these movies he names his levels about that I haven't seen. He's probably got like a repertoire of songs he listens to I've never heard. And it starts, I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) I know what's happening here. It's got two words for most of the song. (laughs) Dripping bloody tears. The way he sets it up into being like, uh, this, you know, the lyrics really just move me <laughs> and they just speak to me. And then... Yeah, for real. <laughs> Fucking guy, dude. Yeah. Barb, I mean, Barb MVP. I, I feel like, I mean, here's the thing that people don't realize. Barb has fun at these. He has, he, like, oh everyone's like, oh, Barb looks like he's not having fun. That's just, that's just Barb, man. Like, that's yeah. just how he hangs out. He has a great time. He smiles. He hangs out with people. He makes jokes. Mm-hmm. He makes fun. Like, he's... Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, he's... there's just like sometimes where he's sitting not on the couch and he's you know just hanging out on a table, sitting, having a neutral face, and people are like, he looks sad. Why are you oh, so yeah. sad, Barb? He he looks sad. Where's Ryu? Oh where's my the god, bald where bald man? Where bald man? Where yeah. Ryan Carr? <laughs> yeah. Or Aura's Aura's chat is powerful. Very I, I powerful. Say that. Yeah, Aura's got a powerful chat. Yeah. Um, Did you guys and... know that like during the whole event? Caddy was secretly, whenever he had a mic, he would secretly whisper into the mic, like, where is the ball? Yeah, and no one, no one, none of us would hear it. I didn't know that. But until the chat after, would. Yeah, until he revealed that in the final night. Oh, I didn't know he revealed it. I, I, he told me in Vegas, and, like, after post MMC. And I was like, oh, I had no idea. It's oh, yeah, yeah. Deal. He, like, I, that's what I meant. Like, he told us at some point after everything was said and done. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, there's there's just a whole lot of shit. I mean the the I don't know how your guys' Meta Mario Maker calendar shoot went. Um, <laughs> you know, I, personally... uh, I think mine went well. I went I I leaned into sexy for mine. I hope everyone leaned into sexy. Um, <laughs> you know that spot that um had like like behind the pool there was those rocks that had like a stream going down. Yes. I like laid in that stream and did a pose. That was that was mine. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I like it. What did you guys do? Um I made laser Mitch. belch yeah, crescent me. Oh, I'm he sorry. did what? He 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 crescent me with his headband. Oh, it's that's like a beautiful. it's like a promise headband, but <laughs> it's it's or it's like a promise ring, but it's a headband that goes on my head instead of my finger. I mean I know where that headband's going. Um, hey. Um, uh, me and Mitch did a sexy by the tree shoot, you know? Nice. Like Nothing sexier than, a, a tree. than two Mario yeah. 3 runners and a tree. Right? I'm excited right? to see that one. Yeah. Um, I, overall, I think it's going to be possibly, okay, first of all, next year we got to do it right. Like next year we need like a fireman costume. Yeah, and, everyone you needs know what to I bring think? their proper sexy calendar cosplay. Okay, check this out. We're all a different thing mario is done so i'll, like, we I'll have, be like, dibs on sexy superhero doctor <laughs> sexy <laughs> cape so yeah sexy cape sexy tanuki sexy referee oh i'm gonna sexy, be a sexy teacher mario teaches sexy, typing yeah oh yeah totally dude yeah. you can totally sexy do doctor yeah sexy doctor that we already said that but you get where i'm going <laughs> oh. now that's oh, totally I didn't, i'm okay. sorry <laughs> sexy construction worker Yep. Is sexy Mario clown. Ever... Mario Odyssey, he's had like 18 billion different costumes there. So literally the Mario Odyssey nipple costume. Yeah. You know? Um, all of these sexy astronaut. Um, yep. yeah, we can do all of these. And that's how we need to do it, you know, like because each I feel like each year we're gonna have to do a theme and sexy every astronaut. That... How would you pull that off? How do you make oh, an yeah. astronaut sexy? Do you need like a Wait, glass you... dome over your nips instead of like the suit or what? Literally every astronaut's sexy already. Um, <laughs> I I don't even know why we're. Can you, can you tell this. me how an astronaut isn't sexy? Yeah, well, I'm envisioning kind of I'm an doing. astronaut in astronaut uniform, like in their spacesuit, right? Okay, that doesn't following. That doesn't feel sexy to me. It's cool. It's badass, but it's not sexy. Um, I, I you know, because I'm picturing, yeah, I'm picturing it right now. And all I'm thinking is fucking in space, but <laughs> you can't take your maybe dick out in just, space. It'll get why can't cold. you take your dick out of space? What do you, you've that, never like, heard about space, space and shuttle. the rules of space? You can take your, you, I feel like you can take your dick out in a shuttle, right? In a shuttle, why yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, in you're a not shuttle. fucking out. Nobody's fucking like 
in space, but like you're <laughs> you're exploring space, right? You're getting I mean, asteroid rock. You're collecting data and that, right? And then you come back to the shuttle, and then you know it's just you and your sexy astronaut lady, and your sexy astronaut man, and then you, you know, you make yeah, sexy astronaut I'm, love. I'm and I, the rest is already playing through in my head right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's a classic. Classic tale, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's sexy, but the space suit itself, like any segment uh, where you're not, like where you're in well, space suit gear, that's what I was envisioning. Because, you know, how okay, are you well, really going to demonstrate an astronaut without having how is, a space how is, suit? Okay, riddle me this. How is being at a doctor ever sexy? Because I feel like that is also not because sexy. Because you can also you can modify being on a construction Listen, I've watched site, enough not porn sexy. to give you this answer easily. Okay. You can, okay. You can modify a doctor's outfit and not be a doctor as much as you can modify an astronaut outfit and not be an astronaut. I just but feel like you, I, mean, I, I wouldn't want to lose the uh, integrity of, you know, having a, a, think, a space suit that wouldn't kill you in the vacuum of space uh, okay here here okay hear me out i'm hearing if you were what would be more impressive if your friend was like yeah i'm fucking a doctor or yeah i'm fucking an astronaut definitely an astronaut, astronaut. astronaut. absolutely an astronaut that's all i'm saying all right yep. and that's plus space I'm is the saying. best vacuum I mean, <laughs> <laughs> referee is going to be the most unsexy. I just want to say that one. <laughs> I don't know, man. I could imagine we get someone who has like just so much chest hair and just have like them blowing the whistle. Perfect. <laughs> and Patty would be the referee. Oh my God. Patty would be the best referee. <laughs> man, for a man with that much hair on his body, he's got <laughs> not as much on his head. He has so much hair on his body, dude. That is yeah. one hairy dude. Yeah. Him and Paco um, both. Paco Paco is an all time human, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Love Paco. Yeah. Yeah. Paco's yeah. cool as fuck. Think the world of Paco. Um, his shoot was, was cool. cool. He did a him. slant. Like he took the he went to the basketball net and got a like photo of him dunking shirtless for his shot. It's like it's a top quality Mario Masters calendar shot. Um did uh what was i gonna say what did, did the completionist as well like all-time human what did, what oh, did yeah. he do did anyone oh no he wasn't there yeah he was, I think gone, he was gone, gone by, by then time. yeah damn he would have done something sexy it would have been good just to have the beards like pumping each other yeah that would have been a good man how about an this article is... getting anyone's literally like rolling written in on about this podcast. beard intimacy uh dude yeah. i can't believe there was an article <laughs> written about the beard intimacy that was like the funniest slash I thought it was like, fake when I saw thing. the image of it at first. I'm like, right? oh, someone made a funny meme about the the stream. <laughs> right? I I was I thought it was <sighs> news, man. You know, gaming news. Like I just that's that's what it is. Like gaming <laughs> news now. They'll 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 write about three uh pretty big YouTubers pumping each other's faces with their beards, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, the, this, a beard scissor, if you will, with the with the bald friction. That was that was something. I'm surprised yeah. bald friction. The one thing, okay, the one thing I was boned about bald friction is they didn't have any of the mics on, so you couldn't hear us just like going insane in the background, <laughs> and, because we were losing our mind in the background. Like we clapped so hard, like it was the greatest thing that had ever happened. And I felt like that really added to the moment, but you can't see that on stream. I was super bummed. Yeah. It definitely was one of the greatest moments of all time. I also really enjoyed the look in Tofu's eyes as he sharpened the knife he used to cut Cliffy's rat tail off. That was ne <laughs> that is never happening again. We are only we are only allowing something like that if you have scissors. Um, no, no knife. Rounded corner things. scissors. You need safety scissors. Dude, that was like that was like some. Horrible, I thought I like, thought Jaku was about to lose a finger, dude. Dude, me too. Uh, you were like, no, me and Jaku like rehearsed it. Coffee, dude. <laughs> nah, me and me and Jaku rehearsed it. I like we we found a knife sharpener. It. We found a knife sharpener, and you know, like I know how to sharpen a you know a knife because I was like in part of the meat department in a grocery store for a while. So it was oh, like come, totally qualifies this. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I'm, I, if if anyone in that house was qualified to cut off that hair, it was me. 
Well, so. I'm just going to go and say no one was qualified in that house to cut off his hair. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. It's a fair, uh, fair claim. I, I tell you, okay, we might have to just spread out the incentives a bit next year because we were running pretty low by the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> we're cutting off hair, and we're, we're, we're uh, putting on, uh, you know, we're doing – bald and beard fusion together you know like we yeah really we really milked to... those those two into a triple right there <laughs> we you really know what though? To... people wanted that oh yeah like people, when, oh, yeah. when power rangers kicked on and arter and patty like collided heads that was so funny like chat lost their mind they walked I, in I with swag that. too like they were like rocking their bodies as the power <laughs> rangers music played and they were walking into the room for it <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. Um, I still, I still wish we would have done the the like pyramid or the totem pole with, um, with uh, sorry, uh, Patty on the bottom. Uh, then we go with Paco and then Ryu car on top. Like, oh, that I see, ultimate. I see. Mm. Yeah, the totem pole. I thought you were um, you were magic. saying uh, like an undone thing, like make a human pyramid out of everybody. No, that would have been horrible. Uh, <laughs> really bad idea. By the yeah. end of it, nobody, I, whoever was at the bottom, would not have been able to hold the rest of us. I don't know. Did you see how many push-ups X Water and Laser did? Laser I did see how many by push-ups like 20, they did. dude. Yeah, la- Laser is in good shape. I would say. Yeah, I've been I've been slacking. I gotta really bring my A game next time. Don't I also have been slacking? Don't worry. <laughs> yep. <sighs> you know who's not slacking, guys. Who's not slacking? Colonel Sanders. Oh, sexy Colonel Sanders. You know, that guy's yes. always had a, a way about him, and I've always kind of wished he was put in a more romantic light. Oh, really? Is that is that true? You, you're you really big on Colonel Sanders <laughs> really being Really something I've light? thought a lot about in my days, yeah. Well, lucky for you, X-Water, <gasps> because the Colonel Sanders KFC dating sim, I love you, Colonel Sanders, has been announced for next month. The game we all didn't know we needed. Colonel freaking Sanders. I um, hear me out. Like, hear me out on this before anybody says anything. If you just make better chicken like Popeyes did, you wouldn't have to make this game. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, KFC. Step your chicken game up. I'm with you, honestly. Yeah. I'm with you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Totally with you. KFC's chicken has just, it's just subpar. Like, they're going around getting desperate recently. Once you start throwing Cheetos into your food, you're either Taco Bell or you're desperate, you know? I, I would just love to be a fly in the room of that meeting. They're all like sitting there like, what are some ideas to really push our you know, company? Let's make a dating simulator. Well, you know. Animate characters. I will say like, their KFC is, is kind of, they do funny marketing. You know what I mean? This is not out of their realm, I would, in my opinion. Like, that's kind of the marketing they do. All fast food right now is kind of like weird, funny marketing outside of like maybe McDonald's. You know? mm-hmm. uh, McDonald's is boring. They take themselves too seriously. The rest of them understand they're serving like, you know, shit food. <laughs> I love Arby's. Like, they're, they're marketing. The, you know, all the nerdy cardboard stuff that yeah, they always make. I like that oh, too. Oh my God. They, they hit the nail on the head. Yeah. That's really good. I mean, Wendy's has the snarky Wendy's, you know, Twitter girl mm. who is yep. very good. She 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 gave me some snark actually. Oh, really? <laughs> I um she, they put out their levels, you know, and somebody tweeted them at me like, "Oh, Pooh, you should do this." And I was like, "I'll do it when Wendy's pays me." And uh you know, instead of giving them free advertising or something like that, you know what I mean? I was like, I was like, "Wendy should pay speedrunners." And they go they go Geez, dude, you could have just said no. <laughs> I kind of laughed, and I was like, "I was like, hey, maybe you should give you know the winner like free nuggets for a month or something." How many and, nuggets uh, would you need? That. Would you need for a month of nuggets? How many days of nuggets would you eat in a month? I think would be the more. If I had free Same. nuggets for a month, I would definitely take advantage of that every single day. The question is, how many nuggets day. per day at that point? I would say twenty nuggets a day. 20. Seven yeah. seven days a week, so that's what you know. One hundred and forty nugs. One hundred and forty nugs a week. Like weeks. not even a thousand nugs, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's they could swing that. That's Trump challenge. I would have done it. Man, oh, dude, done imagine it. that challenge though. Thousand nugs in a month. See if you can do it. Oh man, 
eat a thousand nugs in a month? Yeah. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. I yeah, easy. That. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would put money on that right now that I could eat a thousand nuggets in a month. I don't know. I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I think I could do it, but it would be a commitment. Like, 20 nugs in a day could do some damage to your insides. You know, you'd need to be, like, they all the same nugs? good cardio. Well, like, they're all Wendy's quality chicken nug. They're all equivalent to one. Each nug is one Wendy's nug. Each nug is one Wendy's nug? Yeah. Um, I mean, so like you're, you're always eating Wendy's, like I can't get Wendy's and then go Taco Bell. No, you, or not, or, I don't or, think sorry, you're going to get nugs from something. Taco Bell, but I don't know. No, I think they have chicken fries now, so, but I guess that wouldn't count. It's got to be a nug. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Chicken yeah, strips I mean, don't count. It's got to be a nug. Uh, boneless wings don't count. It's got to be a legit nug. It's got to be I, I from Wendy's. Yeah. I, I can do it. I just wouldn't want to do it. I don't think. Yeah. It would yeah. hurt. I think it would hurt. I would definitely yeah. make sure that I have a strong, like I'm making sure I'm using up those calories if I'm eating 20 nugs a day minimum, right? Because, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's a lot of nugs. Yeah, but I could definitely do it. I mean, that's not even 20 nugs a day. Cause you're like, wait, a thousand nugs in a month? If there's 30 days in a month, let's say, wait, 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 1,000 divided by 30. How I many that's you 33 a nugs a day. 33 nugs a day. Point three. Let's get. I, let's yeah. say it's thirty-one days I in could, a month. We'll do it do in it. October. I, I could do. I could still do it because then, I, then you're split. You're just splitting up nugs. Ten nugs a meal, eleven nugs but, a meal, right? But, ten nugs is a big meal, and like, what is the only thing you're meal. eating at that Not point? If, you're, if you get no fries, no fries, no fries, eleven nugs. No, yeah, yeah. What do you get for eating a thousand nuggets, though? Like that's like that's uh, sure What's we could eat a thousand nuggets, but like, what's the prize? Like, I think that's like a big deal on. On this whole predicament. Yeah, what's the prize? Um, you get a thousand more nugs for free. <laughs> no. You get, yeah. you get a thousand But tacos. only within the next month. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that would be oh, horrible. Like, does KFC I, I, do nugs or do they just do popcorn chicken? I think popcorn chicken is a nug, is it not? I, I feel like it's a mini nug. They're going to be the same thing. I feel like we're splitting hairs here at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I think you're right. But um, so I've got some details about this game. First of all, I had my information mixed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. The it's game. released on the 24th. So you got it four days after Link's Awakening if you get sick of oh, that game fast enough. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I'll be done by then. <laughs> yeah. Um, But apparently you've got nine separate uh, paths that you can take, nine romanceable routes. Each featuring okay. multi-hour long stories. And get this. Ooh. There's a secret ending that hints to the secret recipe. Shut the fuck up. That's what it says. Secret. That's what the article says. Okay, I actually do kind of want to play it <laughs> if it hints to the secret recipe. Because I would love to know that. I, I do. Yo, I do love me some KFC original chicken. I'm just saying. It's like. Still the real game secret. Up. Is the yeah. Thing. Dude, after having Canes like two or three times in at MMC. I'm. <laughs> Get out of here, KFC. I'm all about that Kane's life. Kane's was good. We had we did not eat well at KFC. <laughs> no, we did not eat well. It was chicken, we, burgers, no. and more chicken. I know. Me and my wife have had salads every night this week. It's, yeah, I had a salad tonight, a salad. and I was like, this is lovely. All right. Well, um, anyway, we, we've debated chickens and how many nugs you would eat in a month. 30, you know, 33 nugs a day, sorry. That is a lot, actually, now thinking about it. Yeah. 33 nugs in a day. Is Think a about having 10 nugs. nugs for dinner. Like, that would be a full dinner. It would be a heavy dinner. I mean, you'd have to eat, you could eat 20 nugs for dinner and 10 for lunch, and you're still missing three nugs. Yeah, well, three for breakfast. Like, right out of bed, you have the nugs already already made. You mm. eat them three to start off your metabolism. Go for a quick run. May, work off like those nugs. Style. Go for the quick run. Yeah, eat, <laughs> eat three nugs. To get some energy. Start of a healthy, balanced run. breakfast. Yeah, that's what you need. Uh, uh, you know, you know what you really need after thirty-three nugs a day for a month. Tell me. You need the new Nintendo Switch JRPG Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> uh, so we talked about this poolside at MMC, but uh, oh, God, you guys, I you guys watch the trailer that. for this thing yet? Uh, yeah. yeah, I did watch the trailer. It honestly, yeah. no, like, 
no fibbing. This thing looks sweet. I'm actually really excited to play it. I'm going to pick it up day one and, and like give it a go because this looks fun as hell. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it at all. I think it looks cool, but they lost out on that amazing opportunity to launch it with WarriorWare. Yeah. Imagine yeah. this game, this, this, this device with WarriorWare. Oh my God. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I hope, I, the one thing I would say is I hope any future WarioWare is like a very multiplayer experience. Um, but I kind of agree with you that it would be, you could do a lot of really silly, funny stuff with a <laughs> WarioWare game with a controller attached to a person's leg. Um, yeah. Just like incredibly dumb, stupid stuff. Yeah. So like I, jump I, up as high as you can kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Even with that little, like, the wheel on how you, like, you, like, wobble it really fast. Mm -hmm. You imagine, like, just, like, people just, like, losing their mind and, like, shaking it as fast as they can. Yeah, it could make yeah. for a lot of really cool, a lot of really cool games on uh, on WarioWare. Like, a lot of cool mini games. I hope they use it for more than just this, because if it's out there and people own it, you might as well make an extra, like, piece of eShop software that could use it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That would be sweet. But what I really thought was cool or interesting about it, I guess, is like you look at Wii Fit and it was like a little fitness game. This is like legitimately a video game that's just controlled by fitness. Like they're giving you like a peek at the combat and it's like the enemies are color coded based on what exercises they're weak against. So like if it's a blue enemy, it's like do a war leg workout here and you'll do at critical hits. And I just thought that was yeah. so cool. Yeah. It makes exercise yeah. fun. Yeah, I mean, it, it it does make exercise fun. It, I mean, it's obviously reminds me of, you know, the Wii Fit balance board in some ways and the way it tried to make exercise fun. I, I don't feel like they needed to... Sometimes I feel like Nintendo just does things to do things new instead of just, like, making Wii Fit 2, which would have been great, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why didn't... Why, does, why have they not made switch sports resort <laughs> yeah you know what i mean all that shit like yeah all this stuff should be coming out they should be making sequels to all these shitty games and um it's overall though i i'm really excited because it does look like a fun game like over underneath the absurdity of the controllers which they are absurd no uh, yeah. it kind of does look like a really fun game behind it which is it, it does. pretty pretty interesting to me i think it could be funny to see what the speed what the speed run ends up looking like because you move by jogging in place so i'm just imagining some like two people sitting side by side one dude's got the blue joy con in his hand he's just like furiously shaking it to like run fast <laughs> just exploiting that's, the hell out of it that's probably what it's gonna look like it's yeah. gonna be pretty funny it's yeah. definitely gonna be a Jerk off motion. <laughs> the shape run. weight of the Nintendo Joining, Switch. Yeah, it, it or Mario Odyssey is going to be the most jerk off speed run, you know, of the of the game. So. Any game that beats Mario Odyssey out on the amount of jerk off motion is going to need a lot of jerk off motion. That's uh, I can't wait to award that Warpy later on this year for speed run with the most, <laughs> the most jerk, off, jerk motion. off motion controls in a yes. single game. Yeah, that'll be an exciting Warpy award to uh, <laughs> issue. Um, speaking of jerk off, um, okay. we played a lot of Killer Queen Black or Killer Queen at MFC. <laughs> <laughs> we played a lot of Killer Queen at MFC, and Killer Queen's little brother game, uh, Killer Queen Black, is going to be releasing on consoles, uh, including the Nintendo Switch and PC, October eleventh. Uh, what say you guys? Are you hyped for Killer Queen Black? Yay or nay? I think it's going to make for a couple of fun friend Fridays. I don't think yes. it'll be able to capture the spirit of Killer Queen. The no. si like the arcade experience is part of what makes that game so fun, right? Yes. I you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say nay, but I would have said yay before MMC because I've never played Killer Queen before. And when I played it on the cabinet at MMC, it was, like, so otherworldly amazing that I cannot imagine that experience being replicated on the Switch. Well, we've actually played Killer Queen Black. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, it's very good, but very different, I would say. Yeah, because the there's, like, a lot 
more to the game and it's not necessarily a good thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's a, like different classes of warriors. So there's like sword warriors and ball and chain warriors and the we ball and chain OP. warriors were just OP, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are just mm-hmm. like, they have like a defensive ring around them and they basically just go touch anyone and it's like, well, I win. So yeah. it's even the queen. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's no, they're pretty wow. they're pretty beastly. And, like, and they, uh, the queen also yeah, gets ahead. like a new type of move as well. Like she gets what a dash attack? Yeah, it's like a sideways dash. Hmm. Um okay. that works. Mm-hmm. Um and it just it just plays like a little bit more there's like it feels like there was less ebb and flow when we played it. Yeah. Um whereas like a killer queen game, there's it feels like can go back and forth pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. this definitely feels more like one team kind of dominates in my it snowballs opinion. faster is what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it really does. Um, also the snail is like, wh- one thing I will say about it, like, I love the 16 bitness. Yeah. Of the, graphics the visuals, mm-hmm. the visuals yes. are really great on killer queen black. They're so, so good. Um, there's just a lot of like really really fun visuals in Killer Queen Black, so that's one thing that I think is going to like really appeal, especially going to console where it's going to be you know a, a lot of people who have never heard of the original Killer Queen. Um, it's I think I think that's going to be uh, be pretty awesome, but I I have to agree that the thing that makes Killer Queen so great is playing with ten people at a bar mm-hmm. or at MMC while you're drinking or while you're not on stream. Um, I can't express how much Killer Queen got played at MMC, y'all. Like, it was, a, there was a lot of fucking Killer Queen going on. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it's it's going to be interesting. I, I'm not sure it's going to go the same way, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I remember you guys talking about Killer Queen, like, I think back when I first met you at Smash the Record, you were talking about Killer Queen a lot. Well, I wanted I wanted us to go to a bar where we could play Killer Queen. I remember. Yeah, I remember that. And I was like, oh, you know, it sounds fun. And then finally get to experience it. It was just like so much more fun than I imagined. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it's my expectations were shot out the roof. Yeah. yeah, it sounds so much more lame on paper than it ends up being. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's definitely a game where you have to play like what do I want to say? Like three or four. You got to play a couple of rounds you... to get the hang yeah. of it. Yeah. Once you, like, you pick four. it up quick, but it takes a couple of games to be like, oh, what's who? What do I do with these berries? You know, when can I go on these gates? Yeah. I, I would say at least 20 games before you get like your teeth, to dig your teeth in. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny. Like I watch Aura and Aura after the first couple of games, it's like, eh, yeah, I mean, whatever. It's cool. <laughs> and then, like, I don't know, probably like 15 games later, he was just like in deep. You know, yeah, and yeah, it made it made me really happy the amount of hype everyone had for Killer Queen. That made me like really happy and excited. I was really you were like our father just sitting it, in the back. Just it so felt excited. like a, it felt like a proud dad moment where like I got to share this thing that you know me and X Water and Jakku have got to do it you know many many times. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of I don't know like literally kind of like anytime we get any where where there's a barcade we go to a Killer Queen machine and get our asses kicked. Um, or try to beat up on random strangers who have never played the game. Um, and uh, so, like, I don't know. It was really fun to share that with everyone. But it's going to be even more fun. Like, Killer Queen Black is definitely, I think, going to have some moments. And hopefully it'll lead people to look at the original Killer Queen a bit more. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm really surprised that you you three actually didn't go on a team and, like, try and, you know, like, fight, you know, like, a group of people who would try and take you guys on. We would have you know destroyed. I mean? that. Oh yeah, that would have been unfair, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, even still, it would have been it would have been like a fun challenge, I think. <clears throat> yeah, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have even been fair. Actually, you know, I, I'd say like Off Blues <laughs> almost like the best queen by the end of the weekend. Yeah, he got real good on queen. He just had such good like control over over the the gates. I found gates, really good yeah. at avoiding avoiding danger and positioning himself for optimal gate control. Yeah, and if you guys are like, well, what the fuck does gate control mean? Um, you'll know when Killer Queen Black comes out in a few weeks. You guys should definitely at least check it out. And if you ever see a Killer Queen machine, just please go. One thing that'll be nice about it is it's 4v4. That's legitimately an eight-person friend Friday. Like, 
We haven't had a good um, eight person friend Friday in a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even had a good four person friend Friday in a while. So yeah, that, everyone's you know. everyone's always fucking out of town or, you know, playing Fire Emblem because it just came out. Tomorrow's Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> Tomorrow, Tomorrow is Friday, Friday and, and it's a full moon. It, oh. it is a full moon. Yeah. It is Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> An assortment amount of assorting assortment amount of games we could play. Borderlands three is out too. Yeah. Um. So there's so much shit we could play. We're not even gonna talk about Borderlands three here, just because it's, it's a big game. Um. I think everyone's relatively excited about. Border- I wouldn't say like I love Borderlands, but I definitely like Borderlands enough where I would play it with my friends. You yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? yes. yeah. Um. Yes. So I'm pretty excited about that game. Uh. Let's talk about Last of Us Part Two. Yeah. They have an event coming on September 24th. Is there anything in particular you guys are looking for out of this event? Release date, or yes. at least, like, release window. I think I've actually never 2020. played it. You've never played Last of Us? I've heard it's like a a, a thriller, scary it's game. Good. Is it good? It's have you played the... any, like, any games by Naughty Dog? No, I've, I've never even... Nope. Hmm. Easily my favorite Naughty Dog game. Knowing and, knowing you, I think you would enjoy it. Yes. I don't well, know anyone who didn't enjoy Last same. of Us. Same. I haven't no person who's played that game has been like, it was okay. Like anyone who yeah. I've talked to has played it was like, that game was sick, dude. Okay. Last of Us is a very like it's a very heavy, intense story that uh-huh you definitely instantly become invested in mm-hmm. i would say okay. it has a it has such an incredible like there's a very like distinct world that it's built in that it, even like it's it's i mean it's kind of like zombies but not really um yeah but it's the way it's just done very well man it's yeah. done very very good the combat is definitely like, play last really good like the gameplay is really yeah. solid but the relationship between the main <laughs> characters is so interesting that like you just want to keep playing to just get little more like you just want so much more information about like how they're going to interact with each other in the next segments and everything that just keeps pushing you forward it's it's really fun and it's like if you took all of the story everything out and just rated it on gameplay it also plays really well like you've got Mm -hmm. options for playing like stealthy where you can like do shit where it's like, oh, there's a there's a zombie dude over there. I need to get to that point B, and I'm at point A, and he's in the middle. You can like, you can kill him, or you can throw a brick to make a noise somewhere, and so he goes looking off in the distance, and then sneak by him, and all that stuff. There's like a lot of options for how you can solve any challenge they present to you. Pretty cool. I would, huh. yeah, I would definitely put it on your playlist because I feel like you're gonna want to play Last of Us too because it is going to be it's. I just feel like it's going to be a really fucking good game. Yeah. What do you have a PlayStation 4 or 3? Uh, no, I do not. Damn shame. Well, this got awkward then. <laughs> this got really, really awkward. Um, yeah. I'm I, I think, yeah, Last of Us is, like, one of the few games I enjoy watching anyone play through, though. You know, like, when someone's playing through Last of Us that I know, I'm like, yep, I will sit down and watch this. Because, A, it's like, as a movie... As just a piece of media, like it's one of my favorite stories I've ever mm-hmm. like I'd, I've ever heard, you know, that's ever been told to me. Um, yeah. to the like watching people react to that media for the first time is super fun and gratifying. So, yeah, I yeah. hope you play it because I will be there for that. I will, <laughs> okay. I will stand that stream right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I want a release date too. Like, that's what I want. I, I, I think, I, I think. Anybody who knew, who played Last of Us one is sold on Last of Us two. Give yeah, me a, pretty a, much. Give, give us a release date. I, if it, you know what? If if the Sony keeps pushing it back or Naughty Dog keeps pushing it back, I trust them. I understand, but I hope the release date is kind of early twenty twenty because I'm ready to play that game. Yeah, I agree with that. I I want to play it, and they've made so many good games at this point. They're behind what? They're behind Crash Bandicoot, the first three. They're behind Jack and the Daxter. Good ones. They're behind uh, Uncharted, which I've never played any of those, but I've heard really good Uncharted? things. Yeah, I've yeah. never played them. I like one and two. Okay, they're, I don't like them nearly as much as Last of Us. Yeah, that's fair. They're it's like, they're it, in the same realm of that. Like it's kind of like if like 
Last of Us took like Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider games. And I was going to say, it gives me an Indiana yeah. Jones vibe. Like, oh, I got to go yeah. get the treasure out of the tomb and get out of it. Pretty much, you know, like, but, you know, not tombs or like wherever he's yeah. going to explore yeah. adventure. You know what I mean? Um, so, I, I mean, it's good, though. I mean, it's they're, they're definitely playable games. It's just Last of Us is just like, you know, chef's kiss, like. Yeah, one mm-hmm. of the best one of the best video games ever made. Mm-hmm. Wow! All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Fire Emblem, though. <laughs> Speaking of the exact <laughs> opposite of best games ever made, I, I when I get to make the list, I get here. to choose the news. Okay. Yeah. And this, week's this, news. Is you, this is how you know X Water chooses it. You go ahead and you introduce it because as, this as far as I'm concerned, this doesn't even exist. This week in gaming news, we've got the brand. <laughs> New update to Fire Emblem, including the Maniac difficulty mode. I'm excited about it, man. I played through the first of three routes over the course of most of August when I wasn't traveling. And it was awesome, but this new Fire Emblem game made it easier than they've ever been. And usually they have a lunatic difficulty, which is like the... The, the the super hard mode and I've never played on the lunatic difficulty in any game before because it's usually too hard but this game's hard mode was too easy so now they fi- hmm. they introduced their new lunatic style mode and now I have a reason to go back and play one of these other paths because let me tell you the gold deer had a, a nice conquering of you know their trials and tribulation through the land of Fodlan. But I'm curious to see what happens if you if you side with Edelgard and try to conquer Fodlan with the Empire. So I'd love to do Did that you say on hard Edelgard? mode. Edelgard? Edelgard, yeah. Edelgard? Edelgard. Edelgard. She's she's the sexy with, with, a, with a D. Red tight wearing a- axe lady. Edel. Edel. Oh. Edel. What did you think? Yeah. I don't know. No, I, 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 I heard that too. I heard that I too. I thought you were saying anal guard. And oh, I was like, what? Yeah, no, no, that's not the words I was saying. Um, <sighs> awkward. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I don't mean to shift the, the, your excitement here. I don't mean <laughs> to like, like poop on this segment <laughs> at all. Like I'm, I. This sounds great. Like more modes for a beloved game that may or may not exist is is definitely something great. But I can't help but feel a little bit of personal sadness. And while again, I want to express my happiness for you and the other fourteen Fire Emblem fans out there. The number's uh, gone up fa- since we started this segment. So, hey, dude, I gotta admit, there's there's dozens of you out there. Um, <laughs> I'm very sad that Fire Emblem is getting a rather significant update, honestly, because the whole new difficulty mode is a pretty significant update. That's not as that's not as easy as everyone thinks it is no. to, to implement. Um, you know, you got to balance that shit. It's not just like making enemies harder. You know, it, it is it is difficult to do that. It's getting a pretty significant update. Um, how many weeks has it been out? Three, four weeks. It's been. It came out at the end of July, so about five, five weeks. Okay. So before Mario Maker 2 even has anything said about DLC at all. Yeah, I will give it this. Fire Emblem came with one of those like DLC passes. So you pay an extra 20 bucks and you're guaranteed four waves of DLC. The first one, which was promised to include this as a free update. And every other game in the series has come with this difficulty mode. So I think they were kind of in a we need our summer game shipped out and we'll just add add in the rest of the parts later kind of mode. But I get where you're coming from. It is disappointing to see what is clearly the bigger title, Mario Maker, not getting even an announcement for uh, for what, what is to come. Because you'd think that at least they were working on some items at this point. I would gladly, just for the record, I would gladly pay for a premium pass of oh, some me too. sort for right yes yes yeah i think most people would yeah i mean they're they're into it they're putting more smash characters out after the fighter pass with the positive reception that they've been getting but they Dude, uh, smash smash gets like smash has had like 30 pieces of dlc i feel like since Mario maker 2 it's out. had Hello. three no it's had four fighters come out um, the piranha plant being one of them, and then three in the, the stage, DLC waves. The stage builder, 
the stage um, builder, the home the run contest, system, the replay the stuff. Home run con- yeah. I haven't even played a home run contest. <laughs> Yeah, they just put it out with this uh, with the Banjo Kazooie update, and the best part about it is like they put little blushing cheeks on the sandbag as you smack it around. So <laughs> it just it just makes me laugh, dude. <laughs> this uh, the sandbag is essentially like entered full dom or sorry full sub mode. Um, it makes me make feel like dumb. Nintendo underestimates the people who play Super Mario Maker 2. I'm... They gotta be working on something. They gotta be working on something. I know I know for a fact they're working on the f- matching with friends thing, because... Yeah, they said that. Yeah. Excuse what, me, I had I mean, to sneeze. Do you think... Okay, here is my going theory right now. They had some DLC planned, but... Once they said, oh, we're going to match with friends, they didn't want to release any DLC and that not be the DLC they released, you know? Yeah, I think they're focusing on the match with friends one first. And I feel like we shot ourselves in the foot with this one as Mm. the public outcry community. If they were, I would gladly take new items over versus mode with friends. I don't know about that one. I would take. Oh well, yeah. I I would rather if, I, I would I want first mode with friends more than anything. But I want I I here's the thing is like just knowing versus mode with friends is coming is enough for me that like if it took six months, you know, even a year, like I'm it's coming. You know what I mean? And yeah. and as long as they are always like you know every once in a while, just like oh yeah, still coming. We're just working on it. I would forgive them. I uh-huh. would mock them because how. Hard must. How hard can it be in the year 2019 to let people play with? Real, all they have to do is instead of matching you up with people randomly, is let you choose who you match up with. A feature that's available in many of their other titles. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I, I, I would mock them, but all they need to do is just let me know. Like, yeah, that's still coming. Here in the meantime. You know, of course, here are more items because more items make Mario Maker go, you know, boom, boom. Or not even more items. Like, they don't even have to give me more items that interact with each other. They could just give me more backgrounds and some more music. Oh, yeah. More music, even just itself, would be really hot. Like, more sound effect music. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I love the slide theme and I love Delfino Isle music. But, you know, throw in, throw in, like, the... Oh yeah, That'd I'll be take, great. Give me, I'll take give whatever me they'll give. Give me yeah. all sixty-four music. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Dire, di- dude. Get- if you could throw Dire Dire Docks or Jolly Roger Bay music into oh. a water level, I wouldn't even like hate them that much. He- hear me out, guys. Throw all the music like they have in fucking Smash Brothers in the game. You yeah. know what I mean? Every- Smash Brothers yeah. is over a thousand tracks at this point. Right? Yeah. Can you use yeah. those in the stage creator and Smash Brothers? You can set the music you want for your stage, yeah. Yes. From any of those songs, any of those thousands. Any songs. of yes. the songs you have, including Megalovania now. Including what? Megalovania. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. With the release of <laughs> the Sans costume, they uh they if you I actually like it's the only me fighter costume I've bought because let's be real, I've never had the desire to play as a me fighter. And it's never appealed to me, but they put Sans out and it came with Megalovania. And I'm like, I want to jam to that while I fight people. So that's so good. Yeah. I like how they announce Sans as a me fighter costume and like everybody's wiling out. Meanwhile, meanwhile, this, this Terry dude from what, what, what game is he from? The, uh, he's from like King of Fighters or something like, like the that. SNK fighting King of, games. King of Fighters. He's Fatal Fury, King of Fighters. Yes, um, one of those. Games. Fatal Fury, maybe Fatal Frame. Definitely Fatal Fury and King of Fighters. I'm not. I'm not guessing this. I'm telling you guys. I oh, played okay. these games as a kid. <laughs> I played these games as a kid. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it's funny to see a legitimate, fully fledged character getting less attention than a me fighter costume. Yes. Yeah. I I was super surprised that they just went with Sans as a me fighter costume and not a full fledged fighter. Anyway, yeah. you know, 
Maybe it's, I don't know, because maybe it's because it's... They did announce that there's going to be another fighter pass mm -hmm. for more DLC characters. Yes. So. They did, well, not necessarily another pass, but they said they're going to continue making fighters beyond the fighter pass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I hope they do another pass. If they're like, yo, another, another 25 bucks, we'll give you another five characters, bam, we'll, we'll slam down right there. I think it's pretty safe to say they're they're gonna go. I think I think they're in a situation right now where they're like, yeah. I mean, as long as we have interest in this game, we'll add characters. Um, Smash Bros because, is definitely a full console life cycle kind of game. Like, there's no yeah. reason to not keep adding characters, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, they could go with Ultimate. I mean, they could just keep tweaking Ultimate for years and years to come, and just keep adding more and more characters. Yeah. As long as they're relatively balanced, which I know people don't like, you know, necessarily like Hero. There's that huge thing with Joker, and have you seen the Joker Pokemon trainer? Issue? I haven't seen that. Apparently, that combo between the two—if you you can't duo in tournaments with those two now. Yeah, they banned Joker Pokemon trainer duos because there was an exploit where when you switch Pokemon, it like it beefed up Joker's whatever meter. Oh, it could charge his his persona yeah, yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah, so it charges charges little persona thing every time you switch characters. Huh. Um. So, uh, it, I don't know, like, as long as they keep the characters relatively balanced, and, and that's really hard to do because I think as a casual fan, you want new characters to be fun, and for most casual fans, fun means winning, right? Yes. Yes. But for yes. most casual fans, like, the balance a character needs to receive between a casual fan and a competitive fan is different right like you need yes you need to have yes. like a completely different kind of balance folk like like for example marth's side b needs to be weaker because it, casual people throw it out more often and it performs too well in low tier games but then it needs to have enough like merit behind it that it's not a useless move when it comes to someone in a competitive sense where they know how to react to that move and you know maybe it's really powerful but it has a slow hitbox the same the thing where people complain about k rule being overpowered but really it's like no you just don't play the game that much yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah i mean that it's it's kind of funny like everyone was like oh first day k rule is so overpowered but he sucks yeah he's just it, you know? i want to say he sucks he's just cool and new yeah. He's a new buster. Yeah, he's a new buster. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just um I don't know. It's 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 a tough it's a tough thing to do. Because if you put out a DLC character that doesn't feel powerful, people aren't going to no. feel mm -hmm. excited to play him. But I don't know if many people are going to feel excited to play as Terry from Fatal Fury because even I knew who he was and that I knew his look and what game he was from, but I didn't know what his name was. You know, <laughs> like I've played fatal fury. I've played King of fighters. I, I don't know. I didn't know what any of their names were. And yeah. And he's not like particularly interesting, you know, like you have a game filled with like, Oh, we got this, this fighter who turns into a dragon when she charges up her neutral B and we've got this guy, he's a bear. And also there's a bird in the backpack. And this one who's, you know, a two dimensional man who cooks, cooks fish and peanuts. And then it's like, this guy wears a jacket and punches people. It's like, eh, we already I, I got Ryu and Ken. Yeah. He's a less cool Ryu and Ken. Yeah. I mean, even, even like, in his own game, he's a literal less Ryu and Ken. Like he's just that's the thing just what is, he is. Like he's he's their mascot. He's Fatal Fury's mascot. And Fatal Fury is just not as good a game as Street Fighter. It's not as cool a game as Street Fighter. His literally whole existence is a less cool Ryu and Ken. Yeah. I think I think Sakurai, it's not so much about the characters he brings in. I think it's more so about crossing the universe is together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think at the end of the day, he really wants Smash Brothers Ultimate to be that one game in history that had the most crossover crossovers and no game for 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 ages will ever even come close to that. That's fair. I mean it's it's he's doing it. I mean I, I think I, I I think there's a lot of merit to that theory in that the announcement that they did like Oh, here's all the Nintendos of past, and then oh, there was also the Genesis. But then, like, 
y'all forgot about the Neo Geo, you know? <laughs> yep. Um, the Neo so, Geo. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of how the announcement of Terry yeah. went, you know? And um, I don't know, it was cool. I liked, I liked that Banjo was out. People seem to like Banjo. He's fun. Yeah, he's, fun. he's got a, a fun, fun, a fun tools, tool kit. He's not, like, too gimmicky either, which I really like, because I feel like they were doing that with Joker and Hero. Like, Joker's got his meter, and... And Hero's got his magic bar and all his dumb shit. Banjo's got his yeah. invincibility feathers. And, like, yep. that's simple, easy to track, not too complicated. And I like that. He's just a regular fighter beyond all that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, we talked about balance. Um, they may be things you, you prevent, like, uh, you know, the imbalance you need to like prevent cheating. I want to say in competitive sports, uh, they really work hard to prevent any cheating in smash brothers. Uh, and you know, another entity that, that didn't really work hard at preventing cheating, e. uh, is twin galaxies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then they did, they, you know, they came to the light, came under new ownership and then they did start working hard to prevent cheating. And uh, now they are finding themselves in a lawsuit. Oh, no. Uh, I know, Billy right? Mitchell who, strikes back. Yeah, this is so wild. This is like the wildest twist and turn. We've actually covered the Billy Mitchell cheating scandal. Sorry, it, it started as the Todd Rogers cheating scandal. Then it morphed into the Billy Mitchells and Todd Rogers cheating scandal. Um, I remember that. Yes, now, now it is the Billy Mitchell lawsuit over the cheating scandal, uh, which is what we're experiencing right now. Uh, Billy Mitchell has filed a lawsuit against Twin Galaxies, I'm assuming in a uh, an effort to get his records restored, mm -hmm. which is a little strange to me because, like, his Donkey Kong record wasn't even, like, the record anymore. It just, like, would be, like, on the list of, at one point, this was the record score, but... Yeah. It's, it's neither here nor there. Um... I, I don't really know what else to say about this other than did you guys see the front page of the evidence document? He's sim he I'm looking at submitted it to court. right now. His 156 okay. page evidence document is says head, headline Billy Mitchell evidence package right underneath it. Probably the like a really low quality image of him standing in front of about a I'd say a little bit like shy of a dozen beautiful women um, holding a Pac-Man trophy. He's yeah. even going against Guinness in the same manner. They want him to reinstate his records and retract previous statements. Yeah, um, a lot of the a lot of like his lawsuit stuff is against the defamation of his like reputation and all that stuff and. Honestly, if I didn't. I didn't. There's 156 pages here. I didn't read a lot of this. I just know that we've covered the rest of this <laughs> saga and figured it was worth at least mentioning. Yeah, I don't think many people uh, read it because, like, it's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I gotta give. You know what? I, I, I honestly think this is a human who no matter what evidence you put in front of them, like, hey, you did this, I think he's a human that would just say no. Like, I think he would go down with a lie or he's convinced himself that the lie is real to the point mm -hmm. where it, yeah, where it wouldn't matter. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter what happens. Like, he can lose this and he'll just keep complaining. Like, he'll never go away in, yeah. in some way. Yeah. And maybe that's because it's all he's got, you know? Like, this is... All he has, like he has no choice but to fight. Like he's got to, he's got to go down fighting with the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it, I don't know. It's just kind of like it's sad, man. This is like a fifty-six-year-old dude worrying about a Donkey Kong record that's already been beaten, and like spending lawyers and our government's time to, <laughs> to put this case forward. I don't know, man. It's, move on, Billy. Move on. Just move on, dude. Just let it go. Like let it go. If you if you're so sure of it. You know, you know what I mean? You know, Billy, mm -hmm. like if you're that sure of it, sure of it. I mean, I, oof. it's, yeah. it's like, I guess, I guess if someone were to come up to you, Pooh, and, and claim that you're, and uh, just let's ignore the fact that you have evidence, but claim that your dram, your span of dram records were all false, right? 
And let's mm-hmm. say they somehow got speedrun.com to agree and to be like, yep, yep, definitely true. But in your heart and in your head, you knew that you didn't cheat, that you did that legitimately. How, I, would you would you fight tooth and nail to dispute that? Or would you be like, okay, well, you know what? I know I did it. So fuck you. I, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, I probably would fight a pretty large amount to uh to right the wrongs i however um i i think it's pretty indisputable evidence that's against billy mitchell you know what yeah. i mean there's the same thing with todd rogers the, the todd rogers especially like there is no doubt indisputable evidence that there is a max time score no matter what you do mm-hmm. on dragster you know what i mean this is the same thing like it was it is a Quite obvious, indisputable fact that he used an emulator on the run that was ultimately in King of Kong, the ultimately disputed run, there it, that which is something that was against the rules, and he knew it was against the rules, and is is against stringently against um, Donkey Kong, you know, competitive gaming, which obviously I don't know much about that scene, but I do know that, and and like it's, I don't know, like. It's pretty. I'm trying to like think of a real world way to like a real world thing to compare it to, you know. It's like R. Kelly. He's like R. Kelly essentially. This that's what I would compare it to. Like we know, everyone knows he's guilty (laughs) at this point. Like there is indisputable amounts of evidence all over the place. The glove doesn't fit. Yeah, like I, I mean that he at least got off the jury though. You know what I mean? He. Uh, he he has at least a one percent down. Like with R. Kelly, like there's no yeah. Doubt R. Kelly, point. like R. Kelly, R. Kelly, one hundred percent a shit bag. <laughs> R. Kelly married a fifteen year old and then's like, I never did that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all <It's>, are crazy. <laughs> I never did that. You know, like and that's Billy Mitchell. Like you know what I mean? He's he's, he's facing like this. There's undisputable evidence against him. Is essentially what I would say, and that that would be the difference. And that you you would have to have some sort of undisputable evidence if 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 this is all, if we're all wrong, then I feel bad. Like I, when I go to the pearly gates and, and, and whichever God meets me goes, you know, you were kind of a dick to Billy Mitchell on your podcast. He was actually <laughs> innocent, you know, I feel really bad. Hey, but if I that's the think worst that's thing happen. you've done though, I think you're not doing too bad at the pearly I gates. Don't, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen, but like, I mean, it might be on the list, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you guys say we hop into this week's hot take? Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh. Okay, hold on. Hold on I hold like on. it. Hot take. Uh, how about a quick hot take? I like how you had a voice before that voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so... um. For those who watched Mario Masters Coliseum, there was an interesting donation pair of donation incentives at both 150 and 175 thousand dollars. These incentives being number one, the completionist would play Grand Pooh World Two at 150, and number two, the completionist would play Grand Pooh World Two with no save states at 175 thousand dollars. Both of these goals were hit. So, gentlemen, I ask you, will the completionist be able to beat Grand Pooh World 2 without going insane? <laughs> yes. Yes. I got, I got, got faith it. in him. It's going to take him a long time, but he's definitely a dude that I think is not afraid of a challenge. You know? If he's willing to watch that game and take on that challenge, then, yeah, I've got, I've got faith in him. And he's got a strong cast of people willing to offer advice at any point. He beat Kaizo 1 through 3 with save states, right? I and think so. Did he do the third one? It, it, I'm not sure. If he beat the third one, if he did beat the third one, even with save states, that's a no-joke game to beat with save states. Because mm-hmm. you can catch yourselves in some pretty bad spots and get bad saves. I think he's got it. I think he's got it. It's going to take him a while, but this is someone who, you know, like, he hundred percent games that no one, very very few people are willing to do. You know, he he knows the grind. Uh-huh. He is uh-huh. he is not unfamiliar to the grind. Uh, I seeing Kaizo Mario 
two. Um, I don't know if I'm seeing Kaizo Mario three. I am seeing one and two. So, um, I mean, that's still something. The second game fucking sucks. Oh god. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's I, I, he's a good gamer. You know what I mean? He's a gamer. Also, he's, gamer. The he's done a good amount of gaming. Yeah, there's no disputing that. I think yeah. those I think those skills maybe maybe not having the exact skills that are required for Kaizo Mario like having an in-depth knowledge about all of the mechanics available and the way that everything kind of works yeah could, is going to be a little bit to get used to but beyond that if you're someone who is literally known for 100%ing like shitloads of games there's one thing you've got to be good at it's adaptability and I think with that being said he should probably be be able to get through it without like without any throw your controller moments you know what i mean now see though 100 percent grand pool world 2 that's an interesting take because that doesn't just mean all exits that means 100 percent of the game he is tackling well and it, in Pooh's laughter house there is corn dilly and oh. you actually get that hidden p switch and there is no checkpoint between starting Corn Dilly and getting to the end. So not only will he have to beat the entire second half of Pooh's Laughter House, which is really hard, he's going to have to beat Widow's Peak, which is arguably the one of the hardest levels. No, maybe, not, maybe not one of the hardest. The longest level. Most annoying. Most annoying level from Grand Pooh World 1 all the way through. And then he also has to complete the puzzle. He has to do the puzzle. puzzle he'll, he'll do fine on the puzzle. It'll probably take him a solid 10 hours. He'll get through the puzzle. The puzzle, the puzzle's a whole other beast, dude. The puzzle, yeah. Legit, the puzzle is just a whole other beast that's involved in that game. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, it's super fun, obviously. God, that like, puzzle was puzzle. so good, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hope he doesn't get any spoilers on the puzzle. That's all, yeah. I, that's all I hope is like, Please don't stream the spoilers. It was so fun hanging out with him. He was like, he was kind of a wild card in our crew because, um, you know, uh, Feeney and him met, of course, at the Invitational. Mm -hmm. And so we all, um, uh, we kind of started talking like after the Invitational. We were like, you know, doing that thing where content creators interact on Twitter, but they don't really know each other. You uh -huh. know what I mean? And I just was like shot in the dark. I was like, you know, I know he's in L.A., pretty close to vegas like let's see if he wants to come you know yeah. what i mean yeah and not only did he come and hang out and was like super down to help out with everything like this guy's probably a millionaire honestly he slept in the barracks with everybody you know like, <laughs> yep it was super cool about it all and then on top of that like did a whole prize package like just himself and raised you know probably like fifteen thousand dollars in like a half hour so like, it was cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. He he knew how to hype it up. Yeah, like, snap of his finger. Yeah, super awesome. nice guy. Um, I'm just so so happy to have him involved, and hope he is at every single Mario Masters Coliseum from here on out mm -hmm. to the end of time. Absolutely. Yeah, he I was. Uh, he he was he was filled with like so many good stories too. Just hanging out with him, like post streams were so fun because he's just like yo listen to this cool story about the time i hung out with grant kirkhope and and david wise i'm just like just casually bringing up two of my fucking idols dude like <laughs> the guy is a legend he's so cool yeah yeah uh, um yeah that's like uh, my talk always when i talk to my red bull manager like lucy you, you know lucy um, yeah you yeah. guys both met him yeah he's he's got the same way it's like anytime i start talking about someone he's like oh yeah I'm, I know that guy. Me and him went to dinner this one time and hung out for two weeks in the Bahamas or some like fucking <laughs> weird, crazy story. Like every single fucking time. It's insane. Um, so I, I'm always supremely jealous. Like he would like Lucy was on tour with high tech with Talib Kweli and high tech and most deaf and like, cool records were at his peak. Right. Right. That's yeah. so fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, do we have viewer questions this week? Uh, no, we no. do not. Jaku has access to those. I have submitted a formal 
DM to Jaku to get those forwarded to my Warp World email address as well so we can get those when he's not here. But this week, you guys are you guys are off the hook. But feel free to send us viewer listener questions to uh questions at warp.world. What what's the address we use? Podcasts at warp.world. I'm glad I'm not the only Everything one. Everything goes that. to Jaku anyway if it has at warp.world. So you could even send it to your mom at warp.world and he'll still get it. Is that true? Jaku at that Warp-world. is true, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he gets any warp world. He can get any warp world email that comes in. He sees them all. So if you've been oh, sending wow. nudes and receiving nudes through your warp world email address, Jaku's been taking a peek along the way there. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, wait, I'm good. Yeah, send nudes at warp.world. Please just send your nudes anyway. Send just throw nudes. that out there. Yeah. yeah that, don't send us nudes, by the way. Do not do that. We don't want a whole yeah, pro-Jared situation going on here. <laughs> I'm going to just explicitly say we do not want that content. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we should get out before we get in any more trouble. Before yeah, Jaku yeah, is yeah, really not fall any further down here. Tofu, thanks so much for, for joining us this week, man. Really appreciate mm-hmm. it. Love being on here. I hope you've had a good time talking about nudes. (laughs) Love the nudes. Don't say right, guys. Uh, thanks again so much for listening, everybody. Don't forget, we do record every Thursday live on twitch.tv slash Warp World Staff. These episodes go up every Monday morning on every podcast app, and the recordings do show up on YouTube the following Tuesday morning. So if you ever want to catch those videos or anything, you can find them there. And other than that, check out our Twitter, our Patreon. Every little bit count, uh, counts helping pay uh, editors and production staff behind the scenes on this podcast. So if you're interested in supporting, check us out over there on Patreon. And thanks so much for listening, everybody. This is episode 112 in the books. In the books. Books. Goodbye. See you later. Goodbye. Oh, my God.